again on your left hand side two shoulders left hand side shoulder shows discombobulation what is discombobulation disorganization there are no articular margins the head is not in the glenoid fossa and it is dislocated so this is called discombobulation of a joint and there is no paraarticular osteoporosis to think of an infective type of lesion there are multiple calcifications or ossifications with a soft tissue swelling glenoid fossa is gigantic it is million down this is classical of a neuropathic joint neuropathic arthropathy where there is no osteoporosis there is disappearance of the articular margins there is fragmentation of the bone multiple ossifications and expansion of the articular margins in this particular case of course serum malaria or any lesion in the cervical cord or even the brain can produce this and then on the right side there is calcification there is triangular type of calcification and both on the scapular surface and on the medial surface of the humerus it is dense it is ossification this is post traumatic this patient has got hemiplegia and post traumatic myositis ossificans we can call it two humeri both are children obviously and except the one on the right side is a little bit adolescent all the epiphyses are just closed and on the left side there is circumferential type of calcification and the look at the muscles they are so thin this is dermatomyositis the patient is weak of course these calcifications or ossifications are noted in many muscles but this is one of example just because it simulates the other lesion which you see on the right side is unilateral there is a linear lucency between the cortex and the ossification it is a diaphyseal this is paraosteal osteosarcoma as compared to the regular routine variety of osteosarcoma paraosteal osteosarcoma occur at a little later age and also they are not so aggressive as uh, routine osteogenic sarcoma the prognosis is better that note that translucent vertical line between the cortex and the lesion there is a major difference between myositis ossificans or post traumatic mineralization they call it now and this paraosteal osteosarcoma paraosteal sarcoma osteosarcoma the ossification of density is from the center to the periphery whereas in myositis ossificans or post traumatic mineralization of the soft tissues you get calcification or ossification from the periphery and central lesions there's a major difference two hemorrhoi one on the left side again the epiphyses are just closing he is about 17 years old painful shoulder and you see a lytic lesion in the epiphyses and also in the metaphyses part of the metaphyses if you look carefully there may be some calcifications this is chondroblastoma as we said the epiphyseal lesion but sometimes it may extend to the metaphyses or rarely may start in the metaphyses and extend to the epiphyses and as i said earlier if there is a calcification definitely chondroblastoma in the absence of calcification you cannot rule out chondroblastoma one on your right side again humerus deformed there is no paraarticular osteoporosis again a child and the deformity extends to the metaphyses as well multiple radio lucencies sclerosis glenoid rim also has osteosclerotic this is pseudo tumor hemophilia or hemophilic joint the lesions in the humor are pseudo tumors but the joint also is involved the repeated hemorrhages into the joint and also into the bone produces this type of a classical picture but then in the differential diagnosis what do you think of of course you ask for the clinical history it is obvious it's a hemophilic two vertebral lesions only lateral views are given one on your left side an adult serial lytic lesion the l2 vertebra is all collapsed with a lytic lesion expanding what are the differential diagnostic lesions if he is above 50 you think of plasma cytoma or even metastasis 
we do not think of tuberculosis because the intervertebral spaces are well preserved. And since it is more than 50, it is a plasma cytoma. Why can't it be metastasis? It is possible. In this case, only you have to do a bone survey, limited bone survey, or better, a radio isotope technician 99 bone scanning, where you can see multiple lesions. Obviously, it will be metastasis or myeloma. In myeloma, somehow, somewhere, you may find a cold spot also, whereas in metastasis, most of the time, it is hot. One of the right side is not seen well, but uh, the L5 is again lucent, expanding. This proved to be metastasis by bone scan. Just on plain film, as I told you, you cannot differentiate between these two, particularly the age is above 50. Two hips, one on your left side, classical, classical what? There is osteoporosis is an adult, senior osteoporosis, but then in the joint, there is a mark or thinning of the cartilage and space is narrowed, where in the weight-bearing portion, outer and upper portion of the articular margin, there is sclerosis and there is geode formation subarticularly. Maybe there is some osteonecrosis also in the head. This is classical affair advanced degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis. And on, on your right side, there is a mark narrowing of the joint space, that is thinning of the cartilage and the universal narrowing of the joint, not just one place as you saw on your left side, only superior and lateral. Universal narrowing, again there is para-articular osteoporosis, erosions both in the estabular margin as well as in the head. So what do you think of? Only two things. One, is it a monoarticular rheumatoid arthritis, which is not that common, or commonly, particularly in our country, tuberculosis. This is a tuberculosis of the hip. Again, two hip lesions. One on your left side is uh, an exostosis arising from the lesser trochanter. You see the ring-like calcifications. That is typical of chondromatous type of lesion, that too in the cap, you can probably trace part of the cortex from the lesser trochanter, this is exostosis. When on the right side, also there are calcifications, also there are maybe ring-like calcifications, negative calcifications, but look at the bones, the pubic rim and the skin, they are dense and sclerotic. Look at the femur, the endosteal bone flowing along the bone, flowing hyperostosis. This is malaryostosis. Malaryostosis, you can find soft tissue calcifications also. There's a classical example of a malaryostosis with flowing candle drip appearance, they call it appearance of hyperostosis and calcification. Two infants, one on your left side, you could see the periosteal reaction along the shaft and also note the cat bite like appearance along the medial aspect of the proximal tibia. That is what is called Wimberger's sign. Often it is bilateral. So in congenital syphilis, what do you get? Periostatis, osteochondritis, and metaphysitis. This cat bite like appearance on the medial ends of the proximal tibia is classical as described by Wimberger of congenital syphilis. And one on your right side the subperiosteal hematoma extending along the shaft of the femur. And if you look at the epiphysis, there are ring-like epiphysis. This is curved if it's subperiosteal hematoma. Often with scurvy, one has to differentiate between parent abuse, abused child or battered child. But there, there are multiple fractures or healing fractures, fresh fractures bilateral, may be asymmetrical because it is beaten at several different times. One has to keep that in mind. And two thighs, lower ends of the thighs, one on your left side is a child, epiphysis are not closed and you could see the elongation of the lucent lesion and expansion horizontally but not much elongation, much more thinning of the cortex, one trabecular 
typical of a simple bone cyst or unicameral bone cyst. And look at the transitional zone. It is thin, that means it is benign. One on your right side is expanding the lytic lesion. The cortex is broken. Also, the edge of the region or the so called transitional zone is rather thin. Soft tissue is much more, is again a brown tumor. One on your left side, expanding a lytic lesion. In an adult, obviously, the epiphysis are closed. Horizontal is more than the vertical, although it is expanding on both sides. Soft tissue is swelling. Look at the articular margin, it is paired. So, joint cell tumor does not usually come into the differential diagnosis. This is an aneurysmal bone cyst. Occasionally, a joint cell tumor also can contain aneurysmal bone cyst, but here, if you look at the articular margin, it is paired aneurysmal bone cyst. One on your right side, again expanding lesion. It is not uh, thinning out the article margin, it is going up to that, but it is not involving the article margin. Fracture lines are there. And if you look carefully, there is a small central speck of calcification, classical of and chondroma. Most of the time they are asymptomatic, but a minor trauma occurs, fracture occurs, and they come with pain. Now, talking about giant cell tumors, what are the radiological characteristics? Eccentric, elitic, expansile. Remodeling may occur, depends upon how slow or how fast it is growing. Sclerosis is uncommon. Conspicuous trabeculae, soap bubble appearance, no periosteal reaction, and it may cross the joint also because it involves the article margin, may cross the joint. Usually between 20 to 40 years, males predominant, and then 5% of all tumors do show expansion. More than 50% recur, even if they operate, it recurs, more than 50%. Benign, but sometimes they are aggressive too, simulating a malignant tumor. And then you can't really differentiate between a malignant giant cell tumor and a benign giant cell tumor. That's why we said giant cell tumors. Small fraction, malignant course, aggressive, if it is aggressive, malignant course, knee either uh, proximal end of the tibia or lower end of the femur, more than 50% lesions occur, radius less than 20% and metaphysical extending to epiphysis all the way to the article margin. Grading can be done restricted to the intraosseous portion or intraosseous plus cortical thinning with a fracture or extends extraosseously with a soft tissue component. Cervical spines, two patients, lateral views, one on your left side. Again, it looks benign. It is expansive, no doubt, but the sclerotic margin, the matrix is a little calcified or ossified. It is a ground glass type of appearance, as though you see in fibrous dysplasia. That means osteoid is there, but not mineralized properly to form bone, bone trabeculae. Talking about osteoblastoma, we have mentioned about the radiological features. What are the clinical features. Male is to female ratio. Again, males are uh, dominant. Usually, the age occurs, say, about 30 years. 34 percent of them involve spine, particularly the posterior elements. Occasionally, the body may also be involved. And often, the major difference between osteoblastoma and osteoma is in osteoid osteoma, there is an idus less than 1.5 centimeters. Whereas, in osteoblastoma, it is more than 2 centimeters. That is the major difference between an osteoid osteoma and an osteoblastoma. As we said, nidus is more than 2 centimeters. Cortical, it could be cortical osteoid osteoma, it could be medullary, and it could be periosteal or subperiosteal. Radiological, there are 4 types morphologically. Earlier we have described the radiological findings, but morphologically it could be ABC type in the sense. It is expanding. You saw the lateral view of the cervical spine and the spinous process expanded. That is ABC type. Fibrous dysplasia type, it is crazy type of looking with a ground glass appearance. 
and then osteoid osteoid type. As I said, there may be an hiatus, but you have to measure the hiatus. It should be more than two centimeters. And osteosarcoma type may be very aggressive. The speculative type of periosteal reaction, soft tissue swelling. Two pillows. One on your uh, left side is a child again, moth eaten, sometimes loose interiors involving the iliac bone. This is eosinophil granulum. They are not typical appearance, but you have to rule out other lesions and in the sense of the child, histiocytosis is X or Langer hands histiocytosis X proper name. One on your right side, it is a woman. I remember the patient. She is about 25 years old, comes with pain. And it is an expansile lesion, the acetabulum going all the way to the articular margin. And the, if you look at the, say, transitional zone, it's rather thin, that means not very aggressive, it is a giant septum. There are three proximal ends of the femur. One on your left side is an elongated lytical lesion, scalloping margin in the head and neck. And slight thinning of the joint space superiorly is proved to be pigmented willow nodular synovitis. The one in the middle and the one on the right side is fibrous dysplasia with a lytic lesion. But look at the rind, look at the cortical thickening inferiorly and superiorly. Matrix is ground glass, fibrous dysplasia. Again, two humori. One on your left side is the shaft, mid shaft, expansive, eccentric, central. What is central? Calcifications, hook like appearance, nugget like calcifications. It is parasteal chondroma, juxtacortical. Of course, it is expanding into the middle cavity. Also, eccentric type of chondroma, let us call it. Echondroma, they call it sometimes. One on your right side. Again, a lytical lesion, almost similar, except there is a triangular type of periosteal reaction. More sclerosis. The central dot is not calcium, but is osteophytic density. This is osteoblastoma. The nidus, lucent nidus, is more than 2 centimeters. Two hands, particularly a tension with the middle phalanges, proximal phalanges, middle fingers. One on your left side, there is soft tissue swelling, no doubt. There is an expanding lesion and there is some sclerosis in the center. It proved to be osteoblastoma. It is difficult on the radiograph alone. One on your right side is classical in the sense diffuse type of periosteal reaction, spicules of bone is actinomic lytic lesion vertically going all the way to the optical margin but not involving the optical margin. It is, of course, clinically you find a sinus and inflammation. It is actinomic. Somebody, his friend, bit him, so, and uh, from the saliva, actinomic versus bacteria came and then infected. The one on your left side doesn't show radiographically, but it's an expanding lesion. It is a brown tumor. We know that the case, patient has got a hyperparathyroid, some expanding brown tumor. One on your right side, it's a scalloping margin of the scapula, benign looking, and then it is aggressive. It is going all the way to the soft tissues. This proved to be a desmoplastic finding. It's a rare case. You, know. you can't really tell. You can rule out a cartilaginous lesion. You can rule out an osteoplastic lesion. Two children, one of course, idiopathic coxa, alga, we used to call it, with metaphysical defects. One in the lower side also, almost similar. Except this child has got many other lesions. Metaphysial dysplasia or dysostosis. Proximal femora, again, two cases, one on your left side, expanding, lytic and sclerotic lesion. If you look carefully, nuggets type of calcification, a ring like calcification, arc like calcification, expanding, endosteal scalloping, and chondroma going into chondrosarcoma. Why chondrosarcoma? Look inferiorly, the, the transition zone, we don't know. There's no sclerotic margin. It's all lucent and going and on with thinning of the lateral cortex. But on the right side, unfortunately, you go to the soft tissue. Soft tissue are lipomatous, and you see the calcification and lytic areas in the femur prove to be parosteal lipoma. Parosteal lipoma generally occurs more than the age 35 years. A non tender 
fixed to the bone focal hyperostosis jacob says for the first time described lipoma with hyperostosis and soft tissue lipoma because the fat necrosis a proliferation of the fat you find calcifications and lipoma can occur in the soft tissues periosteal intraosseous lipoma and hemangial lipoma often we see in adult older females in the vertebrae one on your left side nice celtic lesion in the epiphysis only calcifications may be there this is typical of chondroblastoma another case which i have shown earlier one on your right side a lytic area but sometimes calcifications are there purely restricted to the metaphysis it doesn't involve maybe a little bit this again is chondroblastoma classical or chondroblastoma except the classical portion should contain major portion be in the epiphysis and not in the metaphysis but here is major portion in the metaphysis bone lesions look alike we are talking of again two more one tibia lower legs one on your left side what do you see the benign lesion obviously expand side and this is always when i find in adults one is adamantinoma and there is fibrous dysplasia you tell me which one is adamantinoma which is fibrous dysplasia well one on your left side has got satellite lesions going all the way down some satellite lesions. this is adamantinoma one on your right side is in the cortical fibrous dysplasia sometimes fibrous dysplasia may evolve into the adamantinoma but distal satellite lesions are classical of adamantinoma again both shoulders one on your left side again hemophilia the articular end is big joint is narrowed and glenoid cavity is shallow very shallow and almost straight hemophilia one on your right side the tuberculosis a frozen joint small articular margins irregularity frozen joint tuberculosis these two lesions they almost look alike one and chondroma see the central nugget like calcifications and surrounded by lucency and chondroma in the proximal end of the humerus not extending into the epiphysis on the right side the epiphysis are just fused is an 18 year old male and look at this this is a ossification is there it is eccentric it is elongated along the cortex if you look carefully there is a margin and calcification or ossification is occurring from the periphery to the center to the cortex is healing non ossifying fibrom because the healing you get sclerosis otherwise you get could imagine remove that sclerosis and see the lucency it will be classical of a non ossifying fibrom cortically oriented expand one on the left side just spot film of the lower end of the femur i uh, look at the lesion it is intramedullary sclerotic central lucent nidus and a calcificate density in the center like a bullseye it is classical of a intramedullary osteoid osteo because if it is cortical it produces lot of periosteal reaction and cortical thickening and then one on the right side again elongated serpiginous and in a child non ossifying fibrom Osteoid astima for the first time. Jaffe, who's the pathologist, famous pathologist, 1935. Obviously, Jaffe and Lichtenstein have described about 30, 35 new lesions. They are the first one to describe. And then osteoid astima could be cortical, cancerous bone, and subperiosteal or subarticular. Again, you see one an adult, a large lytic lesion. involving the lesser trochanter expanding but lesion is limited again fibrous dysplasia one on the right side a child apophysis and epiphysis are not closed this is a simple cyst although they call it unicameral but there are multiple septa bone cyst simple cyst solitary unicameral bone cyst again jaffe and lichten say 1942 they have described proximal portions of the long bones 80% of them occur either in the humerus or in the proximal part of the femur 
longitudinal expansion because of minor trauma they come with fracture 65 percent of them and then there is what is called a fallen fragment sign that is because the fracture the cortical bone slips and then falls down because it is a cystic structure how do you prove it take the film in decubitus lateral erect postures the fragment moves to the dependent most dependent portion one for both our children but uh, the one on your left side is an anger child mark sclerosis of the metaphyseal end and then that metaphyseal end is expanded this is healed rickets because of the overdose of vitamin d you can call it vitamin d intoxication also the cup portion has sclerosed too much and the normal epiphyses are what osteoporotic well all the calcium from here is taken into the metaphyseal portion one on your right side of course metaphyseal dysplasia irregularity in the metaphysis there is no cupping by lateral symmetric cup again calcification one on your left side there is a calcification below the neck of the femur one on the right side also there is a little bit more lateral and then here one on your left side it is an osteochondrum again exostosis look at the cap it is an obliterated irregular exostosis arising from the skeletal tuberosity there also on the right side it looks like exostosis but it's post op hematoma calcified hematoma occasionally if the patient had repeated femoral punctures for catheterization you may get a aneurysm of the femoral artery calcified that way what is hematoma post traumatic one on your left side is a tower shape tarry exostosis post traumatic it is a triangular and dense looking like an exostosis one on the right side earlier we had described a chondroma with a hook like appearance eccentric soft tissue although there is no calcification this chondromatous lesion a chondroma classical appearance turret exostosis common post traumatic again a child mark a trabeculation in the proximal portion of the metaphysis extending of the epiphysis again this is a simple cyst with multiple trabeculi we can't it be giant cell because the epiphysial plate is still intact rarely it may occur but intact as we said earlier giant cell tumor can cross the joint one on the right side aggressive expanding elytic lesion with trabeculi formation wide zone of transition aggressive lesion is again a desmoplastic fibrom two actually three humeri the one on the left side is the same humerus on the ap and lateral view it is a simple cyst as the patient grows the simple cyst comes down from the metaphysis to the diaphysis trabeculated unicamp and the one on the right side also you see multiple cysts is an unusual case of hydatid cyst the canococcal cyst in the last picture it is a quiz after seeing so many hands and feet so many lesions what do you think of this this flexion was just a positioning flexion deformity but if you look you see similar picture i can produce whereas in the other lesions look alike so could produce similar pictures say annular bone cyst and giant cell tumor fibrous dysplasia and a simple cyst but in this i could produce a similar picture so nothing looks like this this class classical of what look at the radius and look at the ulna look at the thumb thumb should be on the side of the radius is all reversed patient had unfortunately the optomatic amputation the plastic surgeon and the orthopedic surgeons they came together and quickly sutured it and produced a reversed hand so ladies and gentlemen that is the part of look alike don't be deceived by look alike you have to look carefully as a radiologist particularly look at the details perception is more important and then observation of the details and come to a